If you know nothing about Alluvium and you are just getting started, this is the perfect place to be. Here you will learn why Alluvium matters, all about the ILV and the tokenomics of Alluvium, and how to play the games. I will go over the three major games, Overworld Alluvium Zero, and the Alluvium Arena, and also cover off Alluvium Beyond. So if you're just new to Alluvium, or even if you've been here for a while, this is the perfect video to get caught up on everything Alluvium. Alluvium is an interoperable blockchain game. This means that every single game in the Alluvium universe is greatly interconnected, especially through Alluvials. Alluvials are the things you capture in the Alluvium overworld, and you can then take them into the PvP arena, Leviathan or Ascendant into survival mode. You can also take them into any future games, such as an Alluvium card game that might be created with Alluvium Beyond. In this Alluvium universe, we have three games and one other essential product that are currently in the market. We have Alluvium Zero, the Alluvium Overworld, Alluvium Beyond, and Alluvium Arena, which also contains inside it Ascendant and Leviathan. In Alluvium Zero, you will build up a small city that you will then use to generate fuels and blueprints to take into the other aspects of the universe. In the Alluvium Overworld, you will adventure out into the wide beyond into set one of seven different regions, except three only starting off, and then you will capture your alluvials, craft your different armor and equipment, and then take it into Alluvium Arena, where you will combat other players and try to become the very best like no one ever was. Lastly, we have Alluvium Beyond, which is a collectible game focused purely in NFTs that also act as PFPs. In this, it's not necessarily have a crazy game like the other three, but it could have a card game in the future like some of the founders have teased. Now, some of you may be asking already, how do I get beta access? You can just jump in the Alluvium Discord, talk to people, get involved, and then maybe ask for a beta key and people will see if they can sort you out. Secondly, if you own one of the land NFTs that you can find on the Alluvial Master website or even the Immutable X marketplace, then you can buy one of them, claim that role in the Discord, and you will be get given beta access by some of the mods in there. Lastly, join the giveaways on Twitter. Alluvium and a host of different content creators on Twitter have giveaways all the time for beta access into the game, so you can dip your toes in the water before we enter the final open beta launch and NFTs and the blockchain gets integrated into the Alluvium ecosystem. What do each of the games entail? Let's jump into some simple game overviews so we can learn about the controls and the different aspects of each game. Firstly, in Alluvium Zero, you can find land on the Immutable X marketplace, and there are seven different regions to choose from. These will all influence the different types of alluvials that visit your land and the different resources you can acquire as everyone has a unique layout of different elements and fuel sites. Landowners will have access to playing the game, but when the game fully launches, it will be free for everyone to try out on a T2 plot. They can find blueprints on these lands and then mint them later, even before the open beta launch. These lands can also produce fuel for passive income. We don't know the full details about how much you can make or what it's going to look like, but basically you will sell the Krypton you farm or one of the other two fuels, and then you will gain ETH as a result because the players playing in the overworld will be spending Ethereum to buy these fuels and you will be selling it to them as the landowner. Next up, we have the Alluvium Overworld. On the open beta launch, there will be three regions to begin with. You can currently play these three regions in the current closed beta. They will all have different alluvials on them. For example, in Brightland Steps, you might find more air or nature alluvials, and in Crimson Waste, you might find more fire or earth alluvials. On launch, the alluvials will be harder to catch over time thanks to a unique bonding curve. What this means is that if a thousand people capture Atlas, the next 1,000 people that try to capture it will have a harder time trying to do so. Don't fret about this, it will not be that strict or punishing. To evolve these atlases, you would need three of them and then you can burn those NFTs to create an axon. This will really help limit the supply of NFTs and ensure that everything isn't ballooning up out of control and making sure you try to get those higher tier NFTs such as a Ramfire or an Adorius. Sanctum Mesa is the hub of the Alluvium Overworld and this is where you can craft and organize all of your items. When you want to go into the overworld and adventure and capture your alluvials, you will then travel to the obelisk, which you can fast travel to, and you will go to the region of your choice. Once you arrive in the new location, you will then mine resources, capture the alluvials, and make sure to try and catch them all. Now onto the alluvium overworld controls. The F key will set a waypoint, WASD to move, just like with most other first person or third person games, shift to jetpack, 
or to run. So hold the shift key while you're doing that. Spacebar to jump, but if you hold spacebar, you can jump even higher, although it will cost you more energy. Be careful with your energy usage because that will be how you get to higher locations, cross great distances. There are lots of areas in the Alluvium overworld where you could die and have to restart from the spawn point. Lastly, you can use the control key while jetpacking, jumping, whatever it might be, to either glide or slide around the map. There are more movement mechanics coming in the future, but they will mostly use the same sort of systems. Lastly, if you're having trouble hitting the wakes that the alluvials are found in, while in the air, you can hold the right click button to aim down sights of your rifle, and then it will slow time. You can also hold left click for a charged bolt so that when you fire it, it will travel a much greater distance without all that bullet drop getting in the way. So jump, Hold right click and shoot at the wake and you will have a good time. Next, we will talk about Alluvium Beyond. So this is a basic collecting and albums game that you can play on the Alluvia decks in your browser right now. You buy discs, which are like little card packs, and you open them to find these Alluvitars and a host of accessories. Mega discs cost five times as much. However, they have a guaranteed rare and a really good chance of finding a hollow Alluvial. Well, specifically, they have 13 times better chances at finding a good Alluvial Fill out your album and bond Alluvitars to get even more points because the top 100 players on the leaderboard will gain rewards and get distributed ILV every single week. What? And of course, I have the left the best for last, the Alluvium Arena. Currently, the closed beta offers survival mode. What this is, is you take on waves of AI opponents and try and beat them with the set deck for the day. Every single day, the deck and the waves will reset and you'll keep trying until you manage to get on top of the leaderboard. In the future, there will also be PvP, which will be the core game mode of the entire Alluvium ecosystem. Think Summoner's Rift for League of Legends. In Ascendant mode, you will go up in the ranks and everyone will be able to play for free. Now, you will need to own a deck of Alluvials, but don't forget, an Atlas you can also use as an Axodon, which means you'll only need a stage one Alluvial of each different species. In my personal opinion, this might not be too difficult to find and it will be very accessible for everyone to play. However, there is another game mode for those that are a little bit more hardcore. In the Leviathan Arena, you will fight for Ethereum. We don't have the full details on how this waging system will work. However, what's most important to consider is that every alluvial is what it is. If you want an Axodon with perfect stats, you need to either go and find and capture it or buy it on the Alluvidex from another player. Here are some tips for beginners in the Alluvium Arena. There are over 20 affinities and 20 classes in the game. I'm not going to cover them all, but basically there are five basic affinities and classes and the other 15 are composites of those. For example, if you have a Fighter and a Scion, you combine them together and you get an Arcanite such as Scoriox. The Stage 1 Alluvials will always have two basic affinities, Stage 2s will have one composite and Stage 3s will have two composites. The five basic affinities are Fire, Earth, Water, Nature and Air, and the basic classes are Rogue, Fighter, Empath, Scion and Bulwark. So Fire increases damage, as you probably expect, Earth makes you more defensive, Water helps with your energy regen and can also buff the entire team. Nature gives you some sort of healing properties and air enables you to dodge attacks significantly better. It is worth noting that there's no RNG in Alluvium. What this means is that if you have five dodge chance, that just means you dodge every 20 attacks. Not that you have a 5% chance to dodge. With the basic classes, you have rogues, which always teleport to the back line of the opponents and have increased critical strike chance. Fighters, which attack much faster. Empaths, which do a lot of healing to their surrounding allies and even to themselves. Scion, which gives extra magical abilities. So when they cast their ultimate ability, which is called the Omega in Alluvium, they have extra power. And the Bulwarks are very, very defensive, where they're boosting the defensive stats of themselves and their allies. The next tip I'll give you is to make sure you position your Alluvials and keep your healers away from the fight. Healers are really powerful in Alluvium, but they're only as good as your frontline and your damage dealers. Keeping a balanced team and positioning everything accordingly is really important. But be careful, some Omegas can really change the outcome of a fight. There's nothing worse than a dual F at the opposite side of the board targeting your backline because the Omega automatically casts on the furthest away opponent. Make sure you position your Alluvial so you don't get caught up in that mess. Now, of course, I have to tell you some of the further details of Alluvium. 
So it is a blockchain game. And I know what you're probably thinking. Scoriox, why do they need to put NFTs and everything? That's because true ownership of assets is really important, but this is no different to some of your Web2 games. I can consider the Alluvium in-game economy to be very similar of what World of Warcraft has built in their game, and NFTs and the different fuel tokens just give more agency to the players that play this game. The fuels to travel in the overworld will be crypto tokens, more specifically Krypton, the green one. The Alluvials, Cosmetics and Craftables will also be NFTs, and the best part about all of this is Alluvium is on IMX. That means there is no gas fees. It's built on Ethereum, so you know you can trust it. MetaMask allows you to easily move Ethereum over from Ethereum into the IMX blockchain. And there are several easy to learn solutions for holding your assets, including the Immutable X Passport, meaning you will only need an email and it'll be very easy to secure your account safely without having to worry about seed phrases, hardware wallets, and all that other crazy crypto stuff. IMX has got this sorted. And if you don't want to use those wallet systems, you can also use MetaMask with IMX and make sure you never ever share your seed phrase. If you take self custody of your assets, it is then your responsibility. Make sure you're always being careful. I know many of you have been waiting, but now onto the Alluvium token. It is very unique in the world of crypto and one of the main reasons I decided to build an entire channel around Alluvium in the first place. So firstly, there is a 10 million token supply and there's actually only about 9.5 million left because when people mint SILV2, it prevents the equivalent amount of ILV from being created. So Alluvium currently has a dual token system, ILV and SILV2. Stakers mint SILV2 and it can be used in the Alluvium ecosystem at the value of ILV. So basically, if something costs one ILV, you can instead spend one SILV2. Now, this token won't be, revenue, will be distributed to stakers and we'll get to that in a minute. What also happens is as stakers mint SRV2 during the yield farming period, which has almost come to an end, has about six months left, it makes the total supply of ILV tokens smaller, meaning that there's less tokens in circulation. And we're about to tell you why that's important. ILV can be staked for revenue distributions. 100% of the revenues minus expenses goes to stakers. Now, the DAO does currently hold about 10 to 15% of the total supply in their treasury, which means that the other 85% is going to go to anyone that's staking their crypto. And 5% of that is actually going to go to landholders as they sell their fuel. It's worth remembering that the length you stake your crypto tokens for, the more rewards you will gain. If you only stake your token for one or two months, you'll only get about half the amount of tokens you'd be getting as rewards if you were to stake your tokens for about 12 months. So make sure that you're doing your due diligence and remember that if you lock up a token, you cannot take it out for that period of time. To oversimplify the revenue distributions mechanism, if there were $100 million of revenue going into the Alluvium ecosystem, then you would receive about $10 to $15 of that revenue for every single token you have staked at the maximum weight, meaning, you, meaning you've locked it up for 12 months. This is pretty good considering ILV is currently at a $50 price point. That's about a 30% ROI, again, if the DAO earns $100 million. Where can you buy the token? You can buy it on SushiSwap, Binance, KuCoin, or Coinbase. There are many others, but I personally recommend SushiSwap because it gives you full custody of your tokens and your wallet. On some of these other places, if anything happens to the overall exchange, you have some risks. Now that you know almost everything there is to know about Alluvium, where can you go next to continue? So firstly, I highly recommend the Alluvium Showcase on YouTube. It tries to happen every week or every two weeks where Grant and Andrew go through all the leaks that are happening behind the scenes in Alluvium. There are some insane things like new movement mechanics, new regions, then building it out, cosmetic items and all the rest of it. And I definitely recommend you check it out if you want to see how far along Alluvium has come and how where it has to go still. The Alluvium Discord and participating in all the Alluvium events is really important, especially if you want to get beta access, join in on the events in the Discord and they will help you get into that closed beta. The other thing to keep in mind is to watch other content creators on specific aspects. Now you can keep watching my videos. I've got hundreds on just Alluvium, but there are many creators out there that are all putting in their different perspectives on Alluvium and you should make sure to always do your own research before getting involved with a project like this. Make sure you register for the betas in the link down below. Make sure you put in your email so that when you're notified for open beta, future launches, PVP, whatever it might be, you will always be one step ahead.